Hi guys, what is up? Welcome back to another episode of My Thoughts Exactly. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so happy you're here. If you can tell, I am wearing, well, if you're watching, you could probably tell, I'm wearing the original from like five years ago, uh, Savage March that we put out. It was like the first line of merch that we ever did. And it is my absolute favorite thing to wear. I literally live in it all the time. But anyways, hello, happy Thursday. I hope you guys have been having a great week so far. I actually realized while setting up for today's episode that this is the last episode of August and that is wild to me. We are about to get into September. I know last week we talked about how fall is slowly creeping in. I wonder what the like first official day of fall is. I'm actually going to look that up right now. Hold on. Let's find this out together. First day of fall. Okay. That is September 23rd. September 23rd, first day of fall. Um, interestingly enough, I feel like some people, well, okay, I my thoughts are all over the place. I shouldn't be thinking this much about it, but I always figure that like right after Labor Day was like officially fall because it's like the end of summer. Labor Day is like the last weekend of summer. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. Um, but let me know if you guys have gotten into your fall stuff yet. I told you guys last week that I am waiting until September to drink the fall Starbucks drinks, which actually, I feel like this is kind of a hot take. I don't love Starbucks. I really don't. I I just feel like it makes me so sleepy and I don't really enjoy the taste. Granted, I make an exception for like the pumpkin spice stuff just because I feel like it's seasonal and it's cute and like you kind of have to do it. But for the most part, I really don't like Starbucks, even though my K-Pods for my Keurig are Starbucks. I would way rather just go have any other coffee, quite frankly. Um, again, it just makes me really tired for whatever reason. And I don't know why. Like I can drink three Starbucks coffees and I need a nap. I'm not sure what the logic or the science is behind it, but I would much rather just go to like any other coffee shop. Anyways, that's not why we're here today. That was just my little my little rant, my little um my little TED talk. Anyways, so for today's episode, I am very, very excited because we are talking about something that I definitely feel like has taken more of a play into my personal life lately. And it was actually a suggestion by one of you in the last episode, you had commented that this would be a good episode topic to dive into. And when I saw it, I was so excited because like I said, I've really been tapping into this more lately. And I think it's a great thing to talk about. And that is tapping in to your feminine energy, redefining your feminine energy. I think that this is so important for so many reasons reasons. And I think it's something that we should have probably talked about so long ago. And I'm really excited to talk about it today. So for today's episode, how this is kind of going to go down is we're going to talk about what feminine energy is and what the importance of it is. Then we're going to go into how I tap into my feminine energy, ways that I've implemented that in my life, talking about different rituals that you guys could try. And also I had asked you guys on Instagram, what ways you best tap into that feminine energy of yours. And you guys gave some really great answers. So that is what we are talking about today. So grab a snack, get ready. Let's jump right on into it and talking about what feminine energy is and how to redefine your feminine energy because this is something that's going to look different on everyone. It is very subjective and the definition of feminine energy is also something that's going to look different for everyone. But I know for me personally, having that feminine energy means really standing in my power and connecting with myself, grounding myself, and really just centering myself with my soul, body, spirit, like all of it. I think it's really, really important. And in a world where we are all working in overdrive most of the time, it doesn't even have to be in work, just like in our personal life at home, if you're a mom, if you, you know, whatever it is, all of us are in overdrive. And sometimes a lot of that overdrive can overcompensate us and what's going on around us and we can forget that we need to just take a pause and take a moment and redefine what that feminine energy 
is. And there's a difference between, well, there's two types of energies. You have the masculine, masculine energy, sorry, and feminine energy. And a lot of people like refer to that as like yin and yang. Um, I've had a lot of conversations with like my life coach about this in the past and a lot of just, you know, different friends and family. It's something that I really enjoy talking about with people. And when you're talking about the masculine and feminine energies, there are different characteristics that fall under both of those branches. You know, when you're talking about masculine energy, it can feel a lot more overpowering. It can feel very analytical. It's very, you know, goal oriented and very strong and tense and in our day-to-day lives we have a tendency to fall into that masculine energy because we're all trying to get things done we're all trying to succeed we're all trying to reach our goals and we're all trying to get to a certain point and be productive and get things done and not let anyone stand in our way which is not a bad thing by the way you know it's good you need a balance in life which we're also going to talk about and when we overcompensate on that masculine energy a lot of times what can happen happen is that we will experience a burnout and what that can include is you know putting walls up it can mean shutting people out it can mean getting just very cold not wanting to interact with anyone really hermiting because we have just exhausted ourselves so much and in a world that can oftentimes feel very heavy it is really important to have that balance for our feminine energy as well so we don't experience that kind of burnout And with that being said, I also want to kind of just touch on this a little bit because, you know, in a lot of conversations that I've had, something that's come up quite frequently is when talking about feminine energy, a lot of times I feel like that term, you know, with the feminine and like all of that, it can sometimes come across as very passive because when you're talking about that kind of energy, a lot of times you'll hear people talk about being delicate or fragile or very empathetic and feelings and, you know, emotional. And while all of those things are very important and they're all beautiful characteristics to have, I think it's really important to emphasize that that does not, that does not equate to being weak. You know, like when we have this feminine energy, a lot of people can think that that means weak or passive. And I don't want that to get lost in translation because I think sometimes when people hear the word like feminine energy, it can just, you feel, you look like a little flower or something. And it's like something that's like, oh, so delicate. And, you know, something that can break like glass. And I just don't think that that's, you know, a fair representation at all. So I don't want that to get lost in translation because when we talk about masculine energy, we're talking about, you know, strong and, you know, sometimes a little, you know, aggressive or analytical or organized or all of those, you know, capable words. And then when we talk about feminine energy, you know, you have the softer words, the lighter words, the, you know, different characteristics and adjectives like that. And I think that sometimes people can assume that that means, you know, breakable or that means overly fragile or that means, you know, passive, which it does not mean that. It in fact completely does not. But along with that, I think the importance of balance here is key. You know, going through your day to day, having that analytical mindset, that succeeding mindset, that goal oriented, motivated, driven mindset, you know, we're all go, go, go all the time. And, you know, in the what would Sav do's and, you know, different conversations that I've had with my friends, I've experienced experienced so many times people saying, you know, I just, I feel like I'm exhausted. I feel burnt out. I feel all of these feelings that if you don't stop in and check in with yourself and see what you're missing and see what you need to add into your life, those things are going to happen. You're going to experience that because you're not balancing out your energies correctly or at all quite frankly and that's very normal because how often do we like go through our day to day and then stop and be like okay what am I feeling right now it doesn't really happen like that but I do encourage you to have a check-in with yourself either at the beginning of the day at the end of the day you know to check in and see how you're feeling and seeing how you can balance out those energies better because they both are so crucial it's just so important to have that masculine energy and 
and that feminine energy. And I think that once you can capture that balance and see how that works best for you, that's where you're really going to thrive. So with that all being said, where do you begin in all this? Because I feel like something that is very much a pattern and, you know, just these types of conversations or conversations about these grand ideologies is that sometimes we sit there and they're we're like okay so like go do it and you're like what the fuck like where am i supposed to start and so now i want to talk about some starting points that i have because these are some of the things that i do some of the things that i know my friends do and some of the things that help me and again i do want to say you know it's all subjective you are going to find your ways these are just the things that i like to do and then we're going to get into the things that you guys like to do and I do have some also this isn't just like a bullet point list I do have some other thoughts in here as well so just just listen so when I think about reclaiming my feminine energy kind of having a reset and just restoring the balance of the masculine and feminine energies where I like to start with that is really being intentional right from the very second I wake up in the morning when I wake up in the morning I like to take intentional time I like to take that time to ground myself and prepare myself for the day and again set those intentions very clearly even if that means I have to wake up like 20 or 30 minutes earlier than I would like to I think it's so worth it and so important I personally I like to make my coffee or my tea which I've been really into tea lately because my doctor told me that I need to stop drinking caffeine, which is a sad conversation for another day, but I've been really into tea lately. So whether that's coffee or tea, I take that, I sit out in my backyard, I let church run around, I sit there and I put my phone away not a fan of the technology in this little intentional space and I'll sit there and I'll drink whatever I'm drinking I'll see where I'm at I'll see how I can set myself up for success for the day and then something that I really have been loving doing is reading I think I talked to you guys about this a couple months ago I've been very much like obsessed with reading lately and that was not something that I used to love to do at all I think school kind of like ruined that for me but lately I've been really getting into reading so what I'll love to do is once I you know set my intentions and I have that little check-in I will take my book out and I will read for as long as I have or as long as I want and right now I actually just finished The Handmaid's Secret the second one let me know if you guys have read that because that was so good I did like the first one better, but the second one was also very good. But let me know what your thoughts are on it and let me know what I should read next because now that I'm done with it, I'm like, I don't even know where to go anymore. But anyways, whatever book I am reading, I sit myself and I immerse in that. And that to me is a great way to just ground and center myself and really set myself up for success if you don't want to read you can also take this time to journal I know so many people who love journaling personally I my wrist it just hurts when I journal like writing for too long um so journaling is not really in the cards for me but if that's something that you want to try I highly encourage it because I've never heard a bad thing about it I've never heard someone say I hate journaling so I encourage you to try it and just see if you like it. Again, I would if my wrist didn't hurt after I wrote like five words. Um, so that is something that I really encourage. And also um, another thing that I've been trying to get more into lately during this time of just taking, you know, the mornings to myself is breath work. I have heard the best things about breath work. I, everyone in my family does it. I have friends who are instructors at it and it is something that I, I have only heard the best of the best things of and it's something where it really allows you to you know talk about grounding yourself you're just there with yourself centering yourself and I think that that's something that's really really powerful my biggest thing honestly with like the breath work and the meditation as much as I would love to like deep dive into that I can't sit alone with my thoughts I can't do it I'm not at that place yet so like I can't sit there for like 10 minutes and just like breathe in breathe out it's just not in the the cards for me but I do think that if you can I think that it's amazing because I've just heard such great things about it my brother Jackson swears by it and I think that it's something that you know again I've only heard people 
you know, rave about. So if that is something you're interested in, I definitely think that you should check that out. But point being, whatever you feel like is going to sit best with you, whatever you're most interested in, but I do encourage you to take just a little bit of time before your day starts to have that alone time, have that time with yourself. It's just very, very important. And the second thing that I like to move into after this is moving your body. That is so crucial. That is so important. Whatever that looks like for you, because again, that's going to be subjective. I know some people who strictly love just going to the gym. That's their, you know, they tap into their, you know, feminine energy. They put on their playlist. They, you know, do their strength training, whatever it is. I do that twice a week and I love it. Something that I love though to like really, it just makes me really feel balanced in that feminine energy space is hot yoga. If you guys have not tried it, I highly highly recommend it when i lived in san diego i was doing core power which i'm pretty sure there's core powers almost everywhere across the country i'm pretty sure and then i want to get back into it because i loved it like about a year ago when we first moved into this house i went to a hot yoga studio down the street and it 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 made me sick <laughs> which is not very like feminine energy of me but it just it did it actually made me physically ill because i was just not prepared for it and i went to a level that was way higher than what i was equipped to do personally so i definitely recommend reading the fine print and making sure you know what you're signing up for but still i love hot yoga my favorite classes are the ones where i think they do them at like nighttime or sometimes really early in the morning and a lot of studios will do this so see if yours does but they'll line up candles all throughout the studio and it just creates a really zen peaceful environment so i definitely recommend trying that out or not even it doesn't even have to be hot yoga it can be regular yoga but doing something where you're getting your body moving stretching like letting the circulation you know we need all of those things they're so important to us another thing that i love to do if you don't want to get into like the classes and stuff is simply just taking a sunset walk i think that these are so great it really like transforms my mood it's like does a complete 180 you know um, Hayden Church and I will go on walks around like 5 or 6 p.m usually like 6 or 7 actually when it gets a little cooler Um, and it really just makes me feel so good I'm walking down the street I'm seeing people I am you know breathing fresh air it's all amazing and while I do love walking with Hayden in church it's like become kind of like a nighttime ritual thing I also love to taking the time just to walk by myself, put my headphones in and like have that me time. And again, I love doing it at sunset just because it's prettier. I think, I think it's just prettier at sunset. And so it just sets the vibes up, right? So that I would highly recommend as well. And I just think that moving your body is very, very important, you know, make your playlist, do whatever it's going to take to make you feel empowered in that moment, because that is just very, very crucial. Okay, another thing that I think is very important in the feminine energy umbrella and just energy in general umbrella is surrounding yourself with people who display the same empowering energy. This is very, very crucial. If you are constantly surrounding yourself with people people who are negative, people who are bringing you down, people who are blatantly insecure and using that those insecurities to tear you or others down, if you are around people who are just, you know, consistently outwardly negative. And granted, we all have our days. We all have things that, you know, make us mad, piss us off. We, you know, everyone has those things, but there's a difference between having a bad day and then just strictly having a bad outlook on life. If you are surrounding yourself with people who have, you know, just negative perspectives, people who view the glass as always, you know, what is it? Half empty. Yeah, there's half full and half empty. If you're around people who are constantly viewing life as just feeling half empty, you know, you don't, you don't want that. 
that's not going to fulfill you. It's not going to uplift you. You want to surround yourself with inspiring people, people who make you strive to want to do better. You know, those are the types of people that are really going to help you evolve as a person. And it's really going to help you tap into that energy as well. Because when you're surrounding yourself with people who make you want to be better, taking care of themselves, nurturing themselves, being very compassionate with themselves and towards others, I think think that that is very, very important. And it's going to make it easier to tap into that for yourself because you're going to be surrounded by that energy anyways. So it will more so be second nature to grab that within yourself. So I think who you surround yourself with is very important. Those energies are very important. They always say that you are a combination of the five closest people to you, the five people that you are around the most. And so just be very aware of who those people are in your life. Okay, so this next little tip that I have, this isn't necessarily a day-to-day thing. This isn't something that I do on a daily basis, but it's something that I will do every once in a while. And whenever I feel like I need a recharge or a reset into my feminine energy, I will, this is very simple, (laughs) I will get ready for the day. And I know, shocking. But if you work from home, as I do, then you might be a little bit guilty of this as well. I have my daytime sweatpants and I have my nighttime sweatpants. I, you know, I rarely get ready. And if I'm getting ready, I'm literally just putting on clothes and going to the gym unless I'm like going out to dinner or I have you know, I have to leave the house. And even when I'm leaving the house, I'm just, I'm not trying. I'm not doing anything to make myself feel better. So every once in a while, after this pattern has continued for some time of not putting any effort into my appearance, which a lot of times I'm actually proud of myself for not caring as much because there was a time in my life where I would feel like I needed to be put together at all times. But I've gotten to a point where I'm very comfortable with myself. I don't feel the need to constantly, you know, make myself, you know, all dolled up and do the full glam and whatever. And that is because In the past, when I was doing it, I wasn't doing it for me. I was doing it for the gaze of other people. And now when I'm doing it, I'm doing it for myself. You know, when I feel like, okay, I've been in sweatpants for a week and a half. I need to just, you know, I want to make myself feel good again. And that's the difference. I'm doing it for me this time. I'm not doing it for the gaze of anyone else. I am doing it for myself And by feeling good on the inside, it's really going to enhance and give me that confidence boost that sometimes I didn't even know that I needed, but it does help a lot. And again, it's not for anyone else. It is for me and to tap into that feminine energy. And I think that all of us could really benefit from that sometimes. And that can look like whatever you want it to look like, like as glammed up or as little as you want. I know some people feel their best when they have very little makeup on or no makeup on. And if like, if that's you, then like amazing. But sometimes I know people that like to do the full glam and like do the whole, you know, the whole routine, all of it, every single step. And that's amazing too. Whatever is going to make you feel better, whether that's that's putting on a cute outfit, you know, whatever it is, just, you know, remind yourself to do it. It doesn't have to be an everyday thing. I know for me, it isn't. I I can't imagine actually putting myself together, like completely together, doing the full glam and the cute outfit every single day. I don't think I could do that. But every once in a while, it is a good reminder just to set yourself up for a good day. You know, when you look good, you feel good. It's that mindset. And I think that it's really an important reminder because a lot of times there's this stigma that when we do that, you know, when we try and look good and when we try and, you know, feel pretty, whatever that looks like for us, we're doing it for other people. You know, we're just, we're not doing it for ourselves and we're doing it for others and whatever. And I just, I think that's bullshit. I think that we are allowed to look good for ourselves. You know, I've preached this so many times when talking about like romanticizing your life and taking yourself on dates, doing things that make yourself feel good is the number one most important thing. And if you feel best when you're like in a really cute new outfit and like full glam or no glam, whatever it is, then just do it. If it's going to make you feel better, then do it. And I think that it's just a really important thing to remember. 
because it kind of I know for me like I kind of like shock myself like I'll just be in like the baggiest most oversized sweatpants and sweatshirts for days literally days I'm in them right now actually (laughs) like literally and there'll be days that go by and then I'll force myself to just you know what tomorrow I'm going to do it. Tomorrow I'm going to get dressed. Tomorrow I'm going to go work at a coffee shop. I'm going to go work at wherever I can, you know, get out of the house, go do something different. And I'm going to just make myself feel good. And I think that is something that we all should strive for a little bit more. So that's why I think that that is so, so important. Okay, so then the next one that I have for you guys is creating a sacred space. We have talked about this in different ways in different episodes. I believe we talked about it in the Romanticizing Your Life episode. I know we've touched on it here and there before, and I've also brought it up in different vlogs um, that I've done because I recently have tried to recurate my space that I have in my bedroom and just my house in general, but having a space that you feel safe and secure you're in is going to be so important creating the energy and the vibe that you want is so crucial and it's also very exciting like this is a very fun one it's probably my favorite one on the list Now, personally, I live with Hayden, so I live with a boy and finding different ways to bring in like the masculine and feminine energies and vibes and things like that into our home has been an interesting process. Um, But personally, I like to find little pockets throughout the house that I can place things that make me feel good and warm and just bring out that, you know, feminine energy that enticing energy and to me I love putting candles everywhere that's a big thing I love having candles in my house I have candles in my bedroom the living room the kitchen uh, my office where I'm at right now I have them in the guest rooms they're everywhere bathrooms you name it there is a candle somewhere in that room I promise you Um, and I just think that it sets up a really nice inviting you know vibe to the room and so that's why I love it I also like to put flowers everywhere we have flowers in the bedroom flowers in the kitchen flowers on top of the piano in the living room like we have different places where we're bringing that warmth in as well also little crystals I have crystals on my nightstand crystals in the bathroom just different places where you can enhance the vibes the energy and it's something that you get to create which is also really exciting like this is one of those things where it stays put it's like it's not the day-to-day thing where you have to like remind yourself and kind of get into the habit and in the pattern of doing that this is one that's more so you know it's where you go to sleep every night it's where you wake up every day it's where you spend the majority of your time and you want to be able to make that space feel very safe and inviting and bring out that warm feminine energy. So that is something that I really think is important as well. Now, I know personally, one of my favorite things to do whenever I just want like a feminine energy recharge along with all the other things that I just mentioned, one of my favorite things to do is at the end of the night, I like to take a shower, the everything shower, the double shampoo, the conditioner, the hair mask, the everything gets shaven, like everything. That's like my thing. Love that. And then I get out of the shower. I put on like a matching pajama set. I do the skincare. I do the hair care. I light the candle on my nightstand and I grab my book and I get in bed. And that's just one thing that I like to do. That's probably my favorite thing on this list, honestly, besides, well, they're all my favorite things. I was going to say besides the house stuff. And then I was going to say, and also besides the the getting ready but honestly they all hold such a sacred spot and so I love all of them but personally I do think that you know having that time and that little nighttime routine to unwind and again just as you woke up in the morning you're centering yourself you're grounding yourself you're doing the same thing when you go to bed you're having that check-in you're having that little reset I think is also so important whatever that looks like for you it's going to look different for everyone you know I think something that I also used to love to do I don't do it as much just because I don't know the routes here when I was in San Diego I used to have like my exact route that I would go to if you are from like Southern California 
California, I, I'm going to actually, I'm going to put you on right now to the best route in Southern California. If you live there or you live nearby and you drive to Mount Soledad, it's just like a lookout spot and it is the prettiest thing. And I used to live like 35 ish, 40 minutes away from Mount Soledad. So I used to just take the long way, which was the coast and you drive by the ocean. It was such a vibe. I don't have that here. I live in, you know, Nashville now. It's very much hand Montana land, but it's still very pretty. And yeah, so I love just doing night drives. That was always a really nice way to like have my playlist and feel empowered and do that whole vibe. But now it's more so, you know, the skincare, the hair care, the book, the candle, like those vibes. So whatever your vibe is, whatever works for you, works for you. And that's what we want here. That's what we want where you feel like your energies are now balanced. They're recharged. That's the goal here. And I think it's important for me to note because I don't think I mentioned it in the beginning, the importance to understand that everyone is going to have masculine and feminine energies, right? So like everyone's going to have both of them. It's just finding a way to make a proper balance between the two. And I feel like a lot of times we're constantly in that masculine energy on our day-to-day, in our work life. And it's important to also, no matter who you are, take that time to also press the reset and really connect with your yourself and tap into that lighter, you know, feminine energy. Again, lighter, I don't mean passive, I don't mean weak, I just mean the different feminine energy. So that's where I stand on it. And now I'm going to go through and read some of the things that you guys said. If you don't follow the My Thoughts Exactly Instagram page, then what on earth are you doing? Because I always am asking you guys for your input, questions, polls, you know, what would Sav do? It's all on that page. So make sure you go follow it. And here are some of the things that you guys have said. I asked you, what do you do to help tap into your feminine energy? First one, working out. Again, moving your body. It's a great thing. We love that. Second, wearing a cute ass outfit and taking the extra time to do my makeup full beat. Yes, I love it. Next one, putting on a matching gym set, get a good workout in while blasting some hot girl music. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, Another one, skincare and lighting candles, putting on makeup, listening to vigilante shit by Taylor. I miss the Eras tour so much. Okay. Now listening to your podcast. Okay. That's very sweet. Thank you. Um, Letting a man lead and welcoming his help instead of just doing it yourself. Okay. Let me just touch on this for a second. I wasn't even planning on it, but I think that this is a really important topic. Um, So I know personally, this has been something that I have struggled with for a very long time. I lived by myself last year. um, And even though it was only for a year, I know a lot of people live by themselves for much longer, you know, I found myself really relying on myself for everything because I was living on myself, living by myself. I was the one taking care of everything. I was the one paying for like all the bills, all the stuff, like everything is me. It's all me. And I've always been someone where I don't like to ask for help. I am very independent. I am someone who is headstrong and stubborn. And the thing is, is that I can be all of those things, right? But I can also still let other people, you know, help. I can have other people, I can let other people, by other people I mean my boyfriend Hayden, I can let him take over. I can let him lead the way. And what's interesting is that he is such a, like a man's man. He's a guy's guy. Like he is very much like, that is him to his core. So he is always the one who is like, you know, trying to help me however he can, always asking, what can I do? How can I help? What can I do for you? And me personally, I'm always someone who's like, oh no, no, like I can do it. I can do everything. I will do everything. And I've really had to learn to kind of let him lead and fall back into that feminine energy because it almost like entices the opposite response in me sometimes when someone asks or offers help. I feel the need to like jump ahead of them and be like, no, 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 like I've got it. And it like comes off as like this intense, you know, strong energy because I just feel like I need to do everything when I really don't. Like I can fall into my feminine energy 
while still having that masculine energy balance, but I can allow myself to fall into that feminine energy. I feel like a lot of times when this topic gets brought up, it brings up, you know, this whole, you know, gender roles idea and oh, like the man's supposed to do this and the girl's supposed to do that. And that's why people don't like it. But that's not what that means at all. Like you can still be the strong, independent woman while letting your man lead. And I think that sometimes it's really important to, and that's a topic for a different conversation, but I do agree, you know, a lot of times it is nice and it does make me feel more like tapped into that feminine energy when I have someone who's also taking care of me. So I do very much agree with that statement. Okay, moving on, letting, um, okay, this is the same one. (laughs) No, it's not the same one. It's a different one, but basically the same thing, which is very funny. It's saying, let a man lead in a relationship, trust him to make big decisions that are best for the both of us. So yes, essentially the same case in point. So I don't need to get too much more into that. But again, very true. Connecting to my emotions and being aware of myself. Yes, centering yourself, grounding yourself, really asking yourself, doing those check-ins. How am I feeling? What do I need? Where am I balancing my energies in? And how can I level those out? Those are all very important questions to keep asking yourself. Another one, not talking badly about others, focusing my energy on good things and myself. Yes, the energy that you put out into the world is what you're going to get back. If you were constantly spewing negativity, saying hurtful and hateful things, or just being a negative person, that's the kind of energy you're going to receive back into yourself. And similarly, it's who you surround yourself with. If you're surrounding yourself with people who are just constantly negative and not adding anything positive into your life, I think it's important to kind of reevaluate who you are putting your time and energy into. And then the last one we have here is a lot of self-care habits, putting myself together every day, good vibes and good music. And I could not agree more. I think, first of all, I think music is so freaking powerful. I have a note tattooed on me. Um, for different reasons. I think I I did like a video on that like four or five years ago, but I think that, you know, surrounding yourself with either positive podcasts, shows, music, like uplifting things that are going to make you feel good. is also very, very important. So that you guys is this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you took something from it and I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say about it. So with that being said, you guys, that is all for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of My Thoughts Exactly. I will be back next week with a brand new one for you guys and I will see you there. Bye guys. Thank you.